have you ever noticed that the most innovative people oftentimes see things as being dysfunctional that others don't see? They see a world differently. It's kind of magical if you think about it because they're seeing opportunities that can change the world. But you know what? The people, as the phrase goes, who are really crazy are probably the ones who can actually change things. What does this have to do with you and me? We are agents of change. We can see that dysfunction. We can make a difference. We can innovate. Let's talk about that a bit. Cancer is a disease afflicting many people, as you well know. With some forms of cancer, there are extraordinarily good ways to have early detection, prevention, and successful treatment. Consider one example, and that is mammography. I mean, I've not had a mammogram, but I understand that compliance is a problem. That is, people don't want to do it. Is that right? I've heard it's very uncomfortable. And I feel for people having that, that test because I know that can't be fun. And because it's uncomfortable, they may not get it done as much as they should. So that's a problem. That's a dysfunction. Imagine. Consider with me an imaging technology that could be used for mammography that makes current imaging look like 1950s television and this new technology looks like HDTV. Imagine that this new technology also does three-dimensional imaging. High definition, three-dimensional, guess what? No compression required. Do you think the compliance rate would go up? You think people would get these tests more often? I tend to think so. That technology exists. But you may not be seeing it because it turns out mammography is a very difficult business model. It's expensive, it's resource consuming in terms of the hardware and technician time, Many hospitals have to actually subsidize radiologists' time to read mammograms. Malpractice carriers don't like it because it's a high area for malpractice litigation, tort claims. So it's a bad business, but it's great health care. Oh, do you feel it? That doesn't feel right, does it? I love high tech. I think innovation is extremely important as well as exciting. But it should be about the people, shouldn't it? It should be about people. The high tech is only as good as the people we serve with it. Imagine a 37-year-old woman, prime of her life, wonderful family, wonderful career, friends, has it all feels an abdominal discomfort, a big one, very uncomfortable, ultimately goes to the doctor, grapefruit-sized mass on an ovary, scary, frightening. Surgery is done to remove the mass, get those, and take out other body parts to be sure they've gotten the cancer a pretty radical procedure. In doing the pathology, that is the looking at the tissue removed, it's learned after that surgery that this is a very low survival rate kind of cancer. She's advised to you know, put her affairs in order. Turns out though, there was something new going on. And this is some time back there was a new practice of doing a cocktail with chemotherapy. That is, multiple chemotherapy agents being used in a patient. Not just one, but multiple in a 
that cocktail combination kind of an approach. She goes through several rounds of this cocktail, this innovative, creative, breaking with tradition cocktail. A few months later, things look very good. Some time later, she's declared free. And this means a lot to me because she's my wife. It isn't just science, folks. It's about people. Think about, too, when we innovate. We don't innovate in long leaps. We don't do 100-yard passes in the football metaphor. We tend to go through what I like to call the doors of innovation. I mean, many of you may have a smartphone with you today. Imagine how many innovations, big ones, are in that smartphone, whether it's a high-definition display, high-intensity, low-cost memory, supercomputing-like processors, extraordinarily fine software, Bluetooth, the Internet. You can go on and on. Many of these innovations had previously been used separately. In fact, if you carried everything in a smartphone today, you'd be carrying a whole bunch of devices, wouldn't you? Well, you have to go through one stage to see the next. You really had to have the internet kind of connectivity to think about the social media. You kind of had to have the high res resolution display to think about the gaming and graphics. You kind of had to have the memory to think about applications, software, to take pictures, and videos. You get the point. Doors of innovation, you have to go through a door to go and see other doors. So, as you're thinking of dysfunction and innovation, remember, you're going to take steps that will open your mind to the next steps. So it is kind of sequential. Hearing about this, you might think, well, um, What's this mean to me? Remember, like I said, you're agents of change. You too can see dysfunction, and you too can capitalize on it. Now, consider the case of John. John is a person who is having stroke-like symptoms. He goes to a rural hospital, and it's a scary situation, because in treating stroke, there is one FDA-approved drug for treating stroke. That sounds good. Remember, John's at a rural hospital here. There's that one drug. Here's the catch. That one drug is a clot buster. So if you're in the, say, 80% who have what's called an ischemic stroke, which is clot, a clot buster is just what you may want to use but what if you're in the 20% where you're having a hemorrhagic or bleeding stroke, that is, you're bleeding out? A clot buster would not be a good idea. So how do you figure out if it's ischemic or hemorrhagic, if it's a clot or if they're bleeding out? This is where you need specialized neurological help, neurologists who specialize in stroke care. The rural hospital won't tend to have those, those folks on staff, too expensive. But what if you could take care of that dysfunction? What if you could project a specialized neurologist from a distance to that rural hospital? You can. Telestroke, a version of telehealth, that is projecting that health care out from you. Today, if John's in a rural hospital, let's say in North Georgia, we have stroke care specialists here who literally could be doing consults with that patient and the primary care physician at that site, real time, and make a difference. The neurologist here could say, I can tell from the images, from the chart, from talking to the patient, this looks like it's an ischemic stroke, and they may recommend that drug, TPA. Or they may say, no, it's hemorrhagic, we need to go a different route. Either way, the patient gets the closest care they can without moving any more than they need to. And if they need, later need to be shipped, okay. But you want to do as much care as early as possible because time is not on your side. So telehealth is an example of those doors of innovation. The high-performance computing, the internet, the imaging, all that feeds together to make a difference. 
So what can you do to deal with this dysfunction and to make your own difference? I got a few ideas for you. One of them, you can ideate, I-D-E-A-T-E. Be creative, think creatively, think outside the box. No idea is too large, no idea is too small. It's like the case of combining chemotherapeutics when previously that was not considered the right thing. So you can ideate, you can innovate, translating that good idea into a real service or product, like in the case of telehealth, telestroke. Again, you can innovate. Sometimes, though, you've got to iterate, that is to adjust, iterate. Consider the case of the high-resolution mammography. That x-ray system now might be used instead of detecting in a patient, turn it around and use it to actually treat cancer. That's iterating. So remember what we talked about, ideate, ideate, think, imagine, brainstorm, innovate, translate that brainstorm into something that could be used as a service or product. Iterate, adjust, pivot, to make it really do something special. You do those things, you can have an impact. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.